What's up, Israel? It's your girl, Shamar, back on the front line. Another week, guys, another week. And what a difference a week makes, right? Hopefully you guys are all tuned in and have had a fairly, you know, easy going week. Um, for myself, yes, I have. Um, yesterday was my mother-in-law's going home ceremony. And uh, we put a remarkable woman to rest. She will definitely be missed, guys. And Gavin planted a tree for her. Okay, guys. So I want to thank you guys for uh, all of the condolences that you guys sent. Uh, and all of the love. You know, uh, my ex-husband's uh, family, I shared that with them last week. So they got to see some of you guys' condolences to their mom and they're appreciative as well as like aunts and cousins and things like that guys so special shout out to uh, my mom's family for tuning in too and special shout out to you guys for sending that love to them you know um like i said last week it's for me right now i want to give a lot of recognition to the matriarchs guys because whether we recognize it or not, you know, the matriarchs have gone above and beyond for us. Uh, that's why last week I didn't talk about it, but I had the lamb, you know, the, the you lamb, right, guys? Because we know about Rachel being her name translating to you, E-W-E, -E, the you lamb. I forgot to talk about that picture, uh while we were talking about Hulda, right? But I could have had a honey badger too, right, guys? Because we know Hulda is the honey badger, which is my favorite animal, right, guys? So uh, this week, though, something strange, guys. When it comes to the ladies, you're going to have references to trees. And you're going to have references to animals, right? So this week, if you look at this picture that I got up, guys... That, those are bees, clearly, right? Clearly those are bees. But what kind of bees are those? Hmm? You got a, the smaller bee, guys, is your worker bee. That larger bee is your queen bee. See that black disc on her back? Like right above her, her head. Right there, guys. Um. Uh, that is going to help you identify a queen. Might be in different colors and things like that. And guys, y'all know that I got a bee suit right here. And sometimes I work with bees, right? A good friend of mine is a, a beekeeper. So we're learning stuff every day on the front line, guys, that, you know, like I'm a girl from Brooklyn. We're not supposed to be knowing any of this stuff. But, you know, uh, mama took us out of that. Mama gave us some land and We've made some connections to get us back in touch with nature, right, guys? Because y'all know what I keep saying over here on the front line. We're going back to that way of life, whether we want to or not. So let's stay on track. I brought you guys this over this week because last week we talked about my favorite word, a prophetess, right? I think I've been working on that, y'all. Um, y'all got me to accept my, uh, speech limitations last week in that episode because y'all know that Deuteronomic word was messing with me and so was this word, prophetesses, right? But I don't mind being vulnerable. I ain't no know-it-all, guys. Um, so this week I want to continue, you know, with our family affair and our place at the table, uh, and I want to talk about the woman who was mentioned last week in that episode concerning um, the place at the table, but we didn't we didn't delve into. That was Deborah, guys. All right, that's why we got a B up this week. Whether y'all know it or not, look up the etymology of Deborah, and it's actually going to bring you to the name Melissa. Strange, right, guys? Melissa and Deborah apparently mean the same thing, and they are shout out to the B. Okay, so let's talk about Deborah this week, right? <laughs> I'm a, I, you know what, guys? We could call this episode a shout out to Ephraim because here's the catch, guys, that they have not been telling you. 
All these people that I'm mentioning are Ephraim. You got Joshua. You got Huldah. Practically hijacked, right? That's how that's how Judah got that land back, by marrying into Ephraim. Anyway, we ain't going to go into that this week. When it's time to cover that, we will. You got uh, Joshua, Huldah, and now Deborah. Okay, I'm going to show y'all. But before we get to that, let's talk about who Deborah was and what she did. I'm going to talk about it real quick. All right, in Judges 4. Okay, starts off already the way I like it. Talking about who? Israel. All right, quick question, everybody. Let's see if everybody's paying attention. Is Israel all of the tribes? Anybody who's been here for a while knows better than that. All right, so pay attention, guys. It's talking to Israel. So let's get into it. Judges 4. We got your, your drunk unk virgin, just for the sake of y'all keeping up. It ain't my favorite, but let's go. And the children of Israel, again, did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. So we got to research some of these names, guys, because I bet you it's a boatload of info hidden in those names. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, right? What do y'all think those chariots of iron were? Could they have been cars, guys, like I've been saying? Let's keep going. In 20 years, he mightily oppressed the children of Israel, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Labadoth, she judged Israel at the time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel, in Mount where? Ephraim. What I keep telling y'all, guys. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kedish Naphtali and said unto him, Have not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw towards Mount Tabor and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and the children of Zebulon? So it seems like the, these children are still rocking with them, right, guys? And I will draw unto thee to the river of Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots. In his multitude, and I'll deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, so Barak looked like he ain't really believing her because he's a little afraid. So watch this. He's believing, but he's still afraid. Or not really believe. I shouldn't say not believing her. He's not believing the creator, right? That they will be given into his hand. So watch why I say that. And Barak said to her, if thou will go with me, then I'll go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. So this man right here named Barak <laughs> needs this woman to go with him to believe this. You, these are the stories that are probably somehow this one made it into here. Nobody really paid attention to this, you know, but um, somehow this woman is uh, he's leaning on this woman to go with him, you know, almost like a security blanket, you know, go, please go with me, Deborah, and, and I'll go. But if you don't go with me, Deborah, I'm not going to go. You know, maybe he knew too, that, uh, Deborah was in direct communication with the creator. So if Deborah's there, I can communicate readily with the community, with the creator in that moment, you know, cause you know, I don't know that they had cell phones <laughs> at the time. So he would have wanted her to be readily there so he could communicate with the creator readily there too could be right i'll play advocate here uh, but for whatever his reasons were he wanted her there all right and she said right here i'll surely go with thee notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for the, your honor for the lord shall sell sisera into the hands of who a woman and Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So he's willing to give over this honor, which is not like many men, right? They always want the honor of the victory. You know, most kings, most most people in higher position, they want that honor. 
he's going in knowing that he's not going to get this honor, that it's actually going to be given to a woman. All right, but Deborah rises and goes with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet. And Deborah went up with him. All right, so this man has 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah is just there. All right, she, she, she knows her power. Okay, guys. So now Heber, the Kenite, I, I wanted y'all to read this because this name keeps coming up. And this is why I prefer to roll with Israel rather than saying the term Hebrew, because I'm trying to trace where that name came from. But it's saying here that it originated with a Kenite, right, guys, which I told y'all that name Smith is associated with Kenite. Um, not to say that anybody here who might be a Swift, I mean, uh, sorry, a Smith is a Kenite, right? I'm just saying, right? Because we don't know if all of the right last names are linked to us and all of this stuff. There's a lot of uncertainty. So, but I'm just telling you that if you do the etymology, sorry, not the etymology, the Strong's concordance on the word Kenite is going to lead you to Smith, which I'm not saying is directly linked to the last name, but definitely the profession of, um, of um I don't want to say a locksmith what's the other uh the person that would work with the weaponry all right okay so I got off track but now Heber the Kenite so we see that name Heber which a lot of people will say is associated with Hebrew now follow this guys uh which was of the children of Hobab the father-in-law of Moses right, had severed himself from the Kenites. So the Kenites are somehow linked to the, to Hobad, the father-in-law of Moses, which I thought Jephro was the father-in-law of Moses, but this might be one of his other wives too. So, you know, Moses had a lot going on. All right. It says that, uh, severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanaim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone up to Mount Tabor. Sisera gathered together all of his iron chariots, right? Right? Even 900 chariots of iron and all the people that were with him. From Horasheth the Kenite unto the river of Kishon. Which, remember guys, um, some of these metals are a byproduct of mining. Right guys? I done told y'all that. And where did that mining take place at? right here so let's keep going and deborah said to barak up for this is the day in which the lord have delivered sisera into thine hands so deborah done told this man who got ten thousand men under him get up get up today is the day that you're gonna win so she's acting as a prophetess right uh and telling him is not the lord gone out before thee so Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after them. So she basically commanded him and his 10,000 men. Okay. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak. So that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on feet. Right. So he, he had to scramble from out of his chariot. Right, that they're not telling you is being pulled by horses either, mind you, okay? And fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts unto Harasheth of the Gentiles, and all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword. There wasn't a man left. Howbeit, Sisera fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me. Fear not. When he had turned into her into the tent, she covered him with, with a mantle. Okay. A cloak, it's saying. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I'm thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him a drink and covered him almost like a baby. OK, so he probably was very comforted, which helped him go to sleep. 
she used her maternal powers. Okay, we're going to call it that. But she almost tucked him in like a baby. He asked for water. She gave him milk. You know, some will say it's an aphrodisiac implying something, you know, sexual. I would say it was almost to put him to sleep, especially putting that babe, that blanket over him like a baby, right? And it says, again, he said unto her, stand in the door of the tent and it shall be. When any man doth come inquire of thee and say, is there any man here that thou say no? Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him. So he pursuing the guy and don't even realize this woman right here done already put this put this this nuisance to bed. She done already killed him. Okay, by herself, without an army, without ten thousand men behind her. Where is this story at though? Right. So let's keep going. And behold, uh, Jael came out to meet him and said to him, "Come, I'll show you the man whom thou seekest." And when he came into her tent. Behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. A lonely woman killed this man in a tent. And the hand of the children of who? Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. So this is the great story of Deborah, okay? But Deborah only get one little measly chapter in this book, guys. I done told y'all about this conspiracy, it seems like, to not give the woman a place at the table. Why do I say that? Now, check this out. This is how you know Deborah is uh, <laughs> is Ephraim, right? Look, they got that famous question mark, what I done told you. You're going to come away with more questions than answers when it comes to Ephraim. Right, guys? the memory of this nation will be no more, right? Isn't this what they sat down to do in Psalms, was it 91, 93, when the nations all got together and conspired against Israel to make sure that the name of Israel, right, would be no more. Isn't that what they set out to do? Were they successful? Look like it to me, guys. That's why I'm over here every week trying to scream, Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim is my firstborn. Ephraim is a cake unturned. It ain't no mystery what happens to a cake unturned. It's gonna burn. <laughs> Ephraim was burned, guys. Look at this. So Deborah, if you look into my favorite site, which I call Fab Pedigrees, right? To look up some of these pedigrees, of um now watch this i bet you all her husband stuff <laughs> what did i tell you all her husband stuff gonna be there okay all of the husband's information is going to be there they're gonna call micah a false prophet My, micah got slapped by a man who said that the spirit of the creator leave me to go unto you that's why I believe Micah's a woman. But we ain't going to go there right now. Shout out to you, Limelight. Yeah, you peeped that too. Thank you for saying that in the comments that you question the gender too. All right, but all his stuff there, right? But poor Holder. I mean, sorry, poor Deborah can't get all her info, right? But she's so important. She's a judge. How you ain't going to have her info? So something told me to go over to Jeannie, right, guys? Now... I don't like to use Genie a lot because I don't want to look like other people on this platform. I I guess I can't. I can't look like nobody else on this platform because I'm doing my own thing. All right? But it just so happens to be that I got to use Genie. All right? So check this out. Genie going to tell you something here. Right? That Fab Pedigree did not about Deborah. That she's from the tribe of Ephraim. Just so happened to be the same tribe 
that Joseph says is going to have the promised land, right? It looked like they had the promised land. Yeah, you got uh, Joshua bringing them into the promised land. He's an Ephraimite. And you see Deborah, an Ephraimite. Then you see later on, Judah gets them wiped out. They done, They got Huldah held captive and Huldah gives them that oracle. Y'all going to be in trouble for what y'all did. So I don't think it's by chance that they keep hiding that these people are Ephraim. It's not by chance that they were in their position. Look at this. De Deborah is, says here, Deborah was a prophetess and a judge. Right down here, guys. Trial of Israel. All right. The tribes of Israel, the king of uh, Canaan, who was sitting at Hazor, Deborah participated in a war against the Canaanites to victory on them. Deborah's seat sitting on trial was under Tomer. Deborah between Ramah and Beit El on Mount where? Ephraim. <laughs> no, but that's just a coincidence, right guys? Nah. Deborah was a religious authority. They're showing you when the northern kingdom reigned. They're showing you. You just didn't know that's what was going on, guys. This is the reign of the northern kingdom before being wiped out by the southern kingdom. Remember, it's the southern kingdom that wanted a king. It wasn't the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom was fine under this rulership. Deborah was a judge. It was Judah who wanted kings. Benjamin, who, who are your first kings of the southern kingdom? Saul, a Benjamite, who ain't happy with his place. Then who's next? David, a Judahite. Okay, so you can see uh, where they didn't want to be subjected to this. Okay, it says here, Deborah was a religious authority. Uh, ritual and legal. She discussed matters of jams. I don't know what that is, but we're going to have to dig on that. Tells the word of God and finds fortune. Oh, it says right down here, awkward situation or predicament. Right down here, guys, is the definition. Okay. Uh, tells the word of God and found fortunes like the ancient God and Samuel. Right here. Uh, role of the judge is appointed savior. Okay, this is all jumbled up to me, and I'm not going to keep reading this, but... Oh, but right here, Barak called the North... I like this part. Barak called the Northern tribes, Nephtali, Zebulon, Issachar, right? And the Central tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. I don't think Benjamin's in that Central tribe, because Benjamin is always saying he's a part of the Southern tribes. So they're sneaking Benjamin in. But Benjamin don't want to be there. Je Benjamin is a son of the right hand to Judah. And remember, guys, I show you that in that confederacy. What are those two kings names? Uh, Jefferson Davis and, and Benjamin something is the son of the right hand. So y'all just got to go back and watch it. I put it in the community page today. Whose house are you in, Israel? Go back and watch that video. Uh, shout out to you, Michael Brown. You said it was awesome info. Thank you for that. All right. Shout out to Mimi too, guys. Mimi was willing to go help my mother-in-law out uh, down in Georgia. So thank you for that, Mimi. Let's keep going. Such a broad association of several tribes was a rare period of the judges. Judges described the war stories. Wednesdays went back singing Deborah. Okay, they had a song for that. Uh, the Canaanite army commander took over the tribes of Israel to all of northern Israel. Okay, see, so I told y'all, this is the northern kingdom. Where you're from, Ephraimite. You're not a part of the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom hates you. And they want to glorify themselves. As I continue to show you here on this front line. There is a difference. They not like us, Judah. They well want to be though. So go ahead, guys, and um, 
look up this uh, look up this um, information right here when you get a chance in Jeannie right now I want to come down here to Deborah's personal life it says not much is known about Deborah's personal life in the book of Judges <laughs> exactly it's going to be under the Vatican I keep telling you it is stated that she was the wife of Lapidoff, which they got all of his pedigree, right? Whose name means torches. She rendered her judgments beneath a palm tree. Between Rama and Benjamin and Bethel in the land of Ephraim. Remember, where is Rachel crying at in Rama? She's crying because she know Benjamin betrayed her oldest son, Joseph. That's why she's crying. The trail of tears, guys. Watch what I tell you. But her kids will be rewarded, it tells us, right? This is all happening in the land of Ephraim. That's Israel, guys. Some people today refer to Deborah as the mother of Israel because of the song of Deborah and Barak, which is in Judges 5, guys. So y'all just got to get out there and read this stuff. All right. It's going to tell you how she commanded Barack to get up. You think this woman could have did this if this wasn't her power? Look, they're going to bring in Joshua. You know, you guys got to get into this book, right? Into this reading here. It's very long, so I don't have time for it, guys. But, uh, you guys go ahead and get into this. Y'all need to get into this because it's going to tell you that there were anger about certain tribes not joining. Some cho some tribes haven't joined. Uh, good reading, but I don't I don't have a lot of time, so I don't want to inundate you guys. But look at that picture of Deborah too, by the way. Oh, I don't want to edit it. But I would like to look at it. She got some kinky, coily looking hair there, but we ain't going to get into that. All right, let's go to Deborah. The meaning, all right, it means the B formalizer. The bee is not the only creature that makes a buzzing sound. They're going to show you that the distinction between, I like this right here, uh, bees, the distinction between bees and the distinction between uh, a fly, right? Why is that important, guys? Because what do I always talk about? Who gave us the fly? Did it not come from David? Not wanting to be selfish, you guys got to look at that. David and the gadfly episode, not wanting to take on his punishment. But I like that they're going to show you the difference between the two kingdoms. Another prominent insect in the Bible is the fly, which also buzzes. The Hebrew word for fly is zebub, which serves as a segment of the name Belzebub, meaning Lord of the flies. The difference between the kingdom of God and the whatever done of Satan shows clearly in the difference between the bee and the fly, right? Bees have a house, okay, and operate within a complex colony. Bees like flowers and help them reproduce. They make honey, they speak a language, and care for their offspring and are armed. Flies, on the other hand, <laughs> are homeless aren't social, don't cooperate, like dung and decaying flesh, make nothing, speak no language, don't care for their offspring, and are not armed. Right? Because this is, keep in mind, the, uh, this is uh, a part of that serpent teaching, guys, where we get these... Uh, the obligate parasites are passed amongst each other, right? Because every time a fly lands on you, they say it throws up. So this is the distinction between the bee and the fly. Also note, and this is the distinction between, to me, the northern and southern kingdom. Also note that bees can only function as a society. 
there's no such thing as a solitary bee, right? See, this is the difference between the Northern and Southern Kingdom too, right? The Southern Kingdom wants that solitary, right? Identity, that sovereign identity of kingship, all right? There's no solitary bee which makes honey on its own out of the sheer perfection of its private brilliance, okay? Instead, the bee is a creature that consists of countless, many individuals. You see, Israel is a colony all right, that consists of countless, many individuals who venture about the world and do their little ordinary thing without having much sense of any difference between them and the whole hive. You see that? Said otherwise, bees neither have noble prize nor super bee comic strips, nor do they imagine to stand on the shoulders of giants. Okay. Funny they mentioned that noble prize, right? Bees do not need to stand out. Their strength is in their numbers. They don't want anybody to stand alone. Okay. Unlike the fly. Okay. Just wanted to show y'all that real quick. What I think is a major distinction in um, in uh, the difference between Deborah, you know, the society Deborah's building versus uh, the society that is in the Southern Kingdom. Deborah the prophet was a judge of Israel. That sentence seems to stand alone because it seems we're unable to take the Torah at its word on Deborah's position as the judge. These people struggle to believe that uh, God would intentionally appoint a woman to lead. Often argue that Deborah was chosen, sorry, chosen because no man <laughs> stepped up to fill the role of judge. But the text does not support this. Some suggest that God appointed Deborah to shame the men of Israel. The text does not support this claim either, right? Because we know that Sarah is cheap, right? So that couldn't have been the case, right? We know Sarah, when, when Sarah's name is changed from Sarai to Sarah and Abraham is told to call her Sarah, not Sarah told to call him Abraham. We know what happened there. Sarah is that queen bee. Everybody want to be the queen bee, but everybody ain't the queen bee. Look at Leah. Leah, Leah want to be the queen bee, but it was Rachel. All right, so let's keep going. And we don't like that word queen, but we're just using it in context for that northern kingdom. All right, Deborah was chosen because it's going to say uh, to shame the men of Israel. The text does not support this either. Deborah the prophet was a judge of Israel. Allow that to sink in. Okay. She held court under the palm tree of Deborah in Mount Ephraim. Israelites came from all under the country so she could rule on their cases. Deborah was also given the title of prophet, an acknowledgement that God directly inspired her just ruling in where the Israelite community. She's under a palm tree. Now, last week, I said to you guys, those don't grow everywhere. Hey, right, guys, just like the incense tree, the incense tree originates out of South America, guys. I told y'all, y'all really don't want me to get into this ring of we the people in this. This is the place because I will kill it. OK, guys, I already showed people that's been on here for years. In their in their DMs that. The first haplogroup of locusts are indigenous to the Americas. All right. Why is that important? Because was not Egypt hit with a curse of locusts? So that puts us back in the Americas, guys. I could, I could kill it at this already. But I'm going to show y'all something anyway. Okay, chapter two, uh, origin, uh, di geographic distribution and nutritional value of date palms, right? Because she's under this tree. The exact origin of date palms, the phoenix, right, guys, is considered to be lost. Now, mind you, the, the rising phoenix, right, the ashes. It's like that role of the woman as the judge, guys, connected to that date palm, is considered to be lost in antiquity. The origin, it says, 
exact is it ain't lost in antiquity. They don't want you to know. It's right here in the Americas. However, it is certain that the date palm was cultivated as early as 4000 BC, since it's used for the construction of the temple of the moon god near Ur. Now, where is Ur? That's where Abraham is is uh, based out of, right? So this is going to go back farther. All right, let's keep going. More proof of the great antiquity of the date palm is in Egypt, right? Says it's a symbol for the month. However, the culture of the date palm did not become important until somewhat later. All right, it says the above is confirmed by history and corroborated by the archaeological research into ancient historical remains of Samaria. Sorry, Sumerian, Arcadian, and Babylonian, right? The houses of these very ancient people were roofed with palm tree trunks. All right, let's keep going. In conclusion, date palm is probably the most ancient cultivated tree in the world. It could be safe to assume the reason for mentioning dates, right, and palms in the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic religion. It was the main influence of the prophet Abraham, who was born and raised in the old city of Ur, where the date palm were grown. Abraham's love of the date and date palm left a lasting influence on these religions. The Jews consider the date as one of the seven holy fruits. They celebrate Palm Sunday, but no other religion has stressed the holiness of the date and date palm as much as the Islamic religion, the Holy Quran, right? The prophet Muhammad is reported to have said that the best property is date palm that dates cure many disorders, okay, and urge Muslims to eat the date and tend the date palm. All right, guys, so even they know, and I told y'all that Abraham is closely associated to which religion, guys? So when you talking about the Mosaic religion or the Abrahamic religions, they look very much like this one, and it's no wonder. I personally think they're one and the same, that when you're observing this you're actually giving a shout out more to abraham right guys that covenant that he created guys i keep telling you where the father is king do we not see that in this religion what do the woman gotta do walk way behind them cover yourself up because they can't control themselves could you believe not saying that we should be walking around loosely with low morals nah all right, so let's keep going. Uh, the, the date palm was uh, common in Egypt and Levant. All right, guys. Uh, they even say that the date palm was the tree of knowledge. Okay. It says where the date palm originated is not known, but they're going to try to tell you all over the internet that it's in the Middle East. Yet we're seeing evidence of it in where? The Americas. Palm City is right there in between Arizona and California, guys. This is where I'm at. So um, the oldest, uh, they just they just planted something from one of the oldest seeds, which is going to come from the date palm. Let's go down here to the geographical distribution of date palms. Date palm is found in both the old world, right? They keep saying the old world is Africa, but we know this is the old world. So stop it. And the new world, American continent where dates are grown commercially and in largest quantities. So what do that tell you? If the largest quantity is here, then it was here, guys. You can believe the plant life. The plant life ain't going to lie. And you better believe the plant life is a witness. See? And that's what the creator was trying to say, that the plants will witness. See what I'm saying? The plant life is a witness. All right? Because they left the plant life in this book. Plants are very much like us, guys. They are a witness to where everything was. And that's why they planted. That's why, uh, what's his name? Abraham plants a tamarisk tree, which a tamarisk tree is none other than the date palm tree. What is this about a 33rd degree north in the American continent? The American continent date plantations were newly introduced in Southern California, seven degrees further south. 
less important and older introductions are found in the lower California peninsula of Mexico. <laughs> Right, so, guys, y'all need to get into this. Um, and you're going to see. You're going to see that. Uh, that there's a conspiracy to cover out where these date palms are growing. Mexico and the U.S. have over 600,000 palms. Okay. Followed by Europe. And Australia. It says Iraq is leading with 22 million palms, but what kind of palms are they? And are they just a uh, clone? Because I found evidence that the, uh, I found evidence, guys, that the incense trees over in the, quote, old world over there are actually just incense trees taken from clones here. More info, guys, about the palm tree. The oldest fruit bearing tree on the planet that makes it a female guys that makes it a female the fruit bearing trees are female and I want to tell you there's a difference in gender with the trees it says there are about 2,800 species of palm trees growing in tropical and subtropical um, areas right It says the palm tree is neither a hardwood or softwood, but it's a grass, much like sugarcane or bamboo. Therefore, it technically doesn't grow wood. Hmm, interesting, guys. So, more information about that tree that Holder was under. 14 states you'll find palm trees in. And I want you to know these things are right here. Arizona has an impressive number of palm trees, including species such as the date palm, the queen palm. <laughs> so where, where we think Deborah was? Hmm? Hmm. All you got to do is follow the trees. They're a witness. Now, I'm going to end on this about the honeybee, guys. I'm going to end on this. So shout out to Deborah, an amazing matriarch. You know, she uh, she judged Israel. Probably right here on this soil, guys. And she was from the house of Ephraim. Says honeybees are social insects that live in colonies. Honeybee colonies consist of a single queen, hundreds of male drones, and 20 to 80,000 female worker bees. So the worker bees, guys, I don't know if y'all knew this, are actually the females. Each bee colony also consists of developing egg, larvae, and pupa. The number of individuals within a honeybee colony depends largely upon seasonal changes. A colony could reach up to 80,000 individuals during the active seasons. And it says the population can decrease dramatically during colder seasons, right? It says the honeybee colony depends upon diversity of the population for survival as each cast of bee performs specific tasks. Thus, while queens are extremely powerful within their society, they cannot, they cannot establish new colonies without the help of the drones, which are the males, and the workers, which are the females. Do y'all see how that goes? Who provide fertilization, food, and wax to construct the hive. Everybody working together. I told you guys there was egalitarianism. You know, I might talk a lot about matriarchy. And I do that just to shed light on the fact that there was matriarchy. And right now there's patriarchy. But there was a symbiosis. It was a balance. However, it was led by the woman. That's clear right here, guys. I'm not saying. But there was a cohesiveness. So we've struck an imbalance. And as a result now, we're drill baby drilling. We're all about this oil, guys. But better believe, mama's going to set this straight. See? See? All members of the honeybee undergo complete metamorphosis. That's what's coming. Okay? 
You got your queen, your workers, your drones. All right, guys. Much love to you guys. I want to shed light on uh, this phenomenal woman, man. As we keep talking about phenomenal women, right? That they keep trying to sweep under the carpet. This woman, this phenomenal woman right here, was from a tribe called Ephraim, which is Israel. Figure out whose house you're supposed to be in, Israelite. Much love to you guys from the front line. It's your girl Shamar. See you guys next week.